Hi, everybody. A lot of people posted their pictures after we were done yesterday, which was really fun to see. I know we saw Lila's painting in Seattle, and we saw Elijah. He painted in, you guys are, no, you guys are in Seattle. Lila's in Portland. Um, I saw Hayden and Camden's paintings in California. I saw um, Alicia and Josiah in San Antonio, Texas. So all kinds of people all over the country are painting together. So really we're, we're not alone. That's the whole point, right? <laughs> and we're gonna put some beauty into the world. Right now, I think it's time that we think about beauty, we put it into the world, because that's who we are. We've been created to do good and to bring beauty in the world, just like the Creator. So we're gonna practice that. This is just a fun little painting, right? <laughs> but it's practicing something that's a bigger, a bigger thing. That we, we can create beauty. If you don't know me, I'm Sarah Giese, and I'm an artist. I have a gallery exhibition right now in California, and it will be on until April 11th at the King's Art Center in the Marcellus Gallery in Hanford, California. So you can check that out. I do have a virtual tour that I did because we were supposed to have an opening reception and it got canceled because of the virus. So we did it online. So if you'd like to look that up, it's on my page here. Check it out. I can just walk you around the gallery. We're all having to make adjustments, right? So that was, that was fun. It was different from what I expected, but we made lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm also a mom and a wife. A lot of you I know, we're all just, we're figuring out how to be home with our kids. I have, I've been homeschooling my three boys for 14 years. So I have been kind of home a lot. <laughs> so I know this is new to a lot of you. If you have questions, I could try to help you out. I know my friend Amy, she was posting some good advice about, you know, how to fill your day when you're homeschooling and what the expectations might be, a little bit different from regular school. So we, we um, I have some tips on that and I can share with you as we go along here. And I also teach art and music. I like to express myself. <laughs> so that's who I am. I wanna welcome everybody and I'm thankful that you're here and spending our time making beauty instead of being afraid or just being bored and wasting our time. This is the time we can use to do fun things and stretch ourselves. Not everybody has to be a, a painting fanatic, but we can stretch ourselves and do new things. So I'm going to get started. Some of you um, were asking just about an hour ago for this template right here. I did post it on the website, but if you didn't get it uh, on, on not the website, on Facebook, on my page, but if you didn't get it and you still um, need to make this template, I'm going to give you time to either print it. You can put your watercolor paper into your printer or your copier and print it that way, or you can um, put it up on the window <laughs> and trace, you know, old school way. Or I'm just gonna go through real quick and help you sketch it out freehand and we'll find the shapes and, and it'll be good enough. So all of those options are possible. Right now I'll do that real quick that we'll, we'll sketch it out and then we'll get started. So if you already have this template, you have a couple minutes to get yourself ready. You need a, a paintbrush, you need some water. Water is almost the most important ingredient in watercolors. <laughs> it's like a paint when you're painting watercolor. And um, some paper towels and your watercolors. So I have this watercolor set. This is maybe what you have at home that's great. Anything, any of this will work. This is uh, my watercolor set. I really like it because, um, I don't know if you can see real closely, but like some of these I've used a lot. See that? So it's almost gone, <laughs> this brown is, and I need to buy a new one of the brown, but I don't need a new orange. So you can buy the little packs just by themselves. So I did put a link, some of you were asking yesterday, I did put a link to this watercolor set if you're interested in buying that on, on Amazon, but you don't need to. 
these just work just fine. Okay? So while you're getting all your supplies ready, we're gonna sketch this painting out. If you have your watercolor paper, you're gonna, anytime you're gonna make a drawing from another drawing, or if you're looking at nature and you're wanting to draw something, the best way to do it is look for shapes. Look for the shapes that you see that are inevi inevitably going to be there <laughs> and draw those shapes. That's how our brains work. They like to look for shapes. So we're gonna start here with this kind of circle-y shape right here. Can you see it? It is a circle, but it has a little bit of a teardrop shape over to the body. So let's start with this big shape. You'll see that it's about halfway down the paper and leave an inch or so on the bottom there. So make a circle there with a little tear shape spot that's poking out, okay? This second wing over here is just kind of a half moon shape coming off of this wing, the bottom wing here. So we'll make a half moon. All right, so now this part, this is kind of a wonky, kind of weird shape, but we're gonna go straight from this teardrop area right here on this shape and go straight up, kind of diagonally and around to make kind of an oval shape. And we're gonna have a bulge right here. We all know about bulges, don't we? <laughs> so a little bulge right there to connect to the bottom wing. Okay, and then this one is almost the same shape. It's just a little shorter because it's farther away. So we always wanna think about things that are closer to us are going to be bigger. Things that are farther away from us are gonna be smaller. That's how our eyes work, right? So you're gonna make almost the same shape over here, but smaller and attach it to this bottom wing here. The body, I just kind of, it's a long, it looks like a little sausage right here, huh? A little wiggly lines to show that it's not perfect. And I did put a little line here to, to delineate where his head is. This should be attached to the wings, at least in the back of his body here. And then two big long antenna. I made him a little dramatic. <laughs> and his legs kind of coming down off of his body. Now the, the part that is inside the wing is one of those things that you could probably just use your own imagination what you want to think. I think this is, it's, a, it's kind of an abstract um, butterfly. You know, it looks a little bit like a stained glass window, don't you think? So the shapes in here, you can make whatever you want. I did make bigger shapes toward the, the bottom of this wing. So some oblong shapes and they're a little bit more connected. And then as I got up closer to the top, I made them smaller. So there is white, there's gonna be white space between all of the little, the little shapes, okay? Let them be all wonky. You know, in nature, you don't see a lot of perfect shapes, a lot of circles or triangles, you know. You see a little bit of wonky ovals, <laughs> okay? In the bottom here, I did make a shape coming straight out of his body. I think that's an important shape coming, a teardrop shape that kind of mimics this shape. So we have a little teardrop shape there. And then from there, I kind of made shapes coming out of it, almost like sun rays. You see that? They fill up the space, but they leave some white be between. And then along the edges, we have little shapes, little squares and rectangles and sausage shapes. <laughs> okay, um, let's get painting, okay? Now that we have we've had a little bit of time, I do wanna say like, just as we're going along, we might have times where I'm going faster than what you are feeling like you can go. Or you might get hung up on a part and feel like, ooh, I'm just, I'm not ready to move on. That's totally fine. There's no rush. There's no way that you're doing right or wrong here. You're just, I want you to feel free to stop the, stop the recording or stop the live thing and, you know, click play when you're ready to move on, okay? No pressure, no pressure. So if you're just still tracing your butterfly or making it the outline, 
Just keep doing that. Press pause and we're gonna move on to paint, okay? All right, so here is the finished product. I want you to notice something before we move on. The butterfly, there's the shapes here are, we're filling in this, these shapes we just drew and we're leaving white. So it looks like a stained glass window. This part is yellowish orange in mine and this, it goes kind of, we're gonna blend the colors up into green up here. Now, if you would like to make other colors, you are totally welcome to do that. Use your imagination. So it could be rainbow, it could be two other colors, you just feel feel free to just do whatever you want to do there, okay? The outside, this outer edge, um, the background, is very ethereal. It's, no, there's no lines. It's very free flow. So compared to the last painting we did yesterday, which was more precise and the shapes were, were straight, <laughs> here we're gonna have a little bit of straightness in here, but this is gonna be really free flow, and I want you to be not afraid of that, okay? Watercolor is perfect for that. So right now we're gonna work on this, but I don't want you to be afraid of this outside edge, because you are gonna be able to do it, I promise. Okay, so we're gonna start with the bottom lobe here. I'm gonna use this, these colors so we don't get confusing, but like I said, use whatever color you want. I'm gonna use an orange color, and a yellow color. And if you notice, these little guys, I did move them around so that all of the colors I'm gonna be using today are kind of close right here. So that's the other advantage um, of this kind of watercolor is that you can put them all together. Now if you have one like this, you're gonna use you know, a brownish, maybe brownish, orangish color and a yellow right now. Or blue and green, whichever, whatever two colors you Ooh, you're thinking you'd like to use. Okay, all right, so let's get started. You're gonna take your brush. Any brush will do, really. I don't have my watercolor brush right now, so I'm using this brush. It's okay. So we're gonna dip it in water, get it wet. We're gonna dip it, dry it a little bit on your paper towel, okay? Now, like I said yesterday, when you're, when you're watercoloring, you can use several different techniques. You can put water on the paper and then paint on the paper. So it's wet paper with wet paint, or you can leave the paint, uh, the paper dry and paint directly onto the dry. For this one, we want this, this wing to look a little bit see-through, right? Butterflies are a little see-through. So we're gonna have, we're gonna put water down first and then we're gonna add color. And the cool thing about it is, wherever you put water on paper, the color kind of stays there. It's kind of cool to watch it kind of fill, fill the space, okay? So first we're gonna put water in these spaces here. Let's just do one right now, just for the first, so you can see. And then you're gonna be free to do your own thing. But I put water on there, it's not dripping, and I tried to put it within the lines of the pencil drawing. Now I'm drying my brush off a little bit so it's not soaking wet. And I'm gonna go in with yellow. And I'm gonna get a bunch of paint on. You might not have to do this much wiggling around, but I'm having to, my yellow's getting a little dry. Okay, so I'm gonna drop that, that yellow paint into the water, okay? I'm gonna take dry, um, clean off my brush and get it a little tiny bit wet just with water. You almost think of water as another, as another paint, okay? So get a little bit of water on there and just move that paint around. So it's kind of filling the space, but it has some lighter spots and some darker spots. That's what's gonna make it look like it's see-through, okay? Okay, I'm moving to other color and other shapes here. I'm gonna move on to this one. Put water, maybe I'll put water on both of these. All right, I'm gonna put yellow. And I'm also gonna add some orange in there. If you notice, I'm gonna go along the edges first 
like in coloring, you know? Have you ever do that in coloring books? You color on the edge, and then you fill it in. My mom always did that. Anyway, so I'm gonna go in with some orange now so that it's not just one dimensional color. And we're gonna mix some different colors and so put some orange in there. Is it hard to see with the water shiny? Hopefully you can see that. Keep going. I'm gonna get darker as I get farther down. So I'm gonna add more orange as I get down to the bottom, the bottom shape. So when we, speaking of homeschooling, when we decided to homeschool, I never thought I would ever do that. But here we were. So I freaked out and I went to the library. Well, I went online. I think we could just barely start going online at the library. And I ordered all the books <laughs> about homeschooling that ever would have been possible to order. <laughs> so I walked into the library and she had a stack of books and she was like, oh, are you getting interested in homeschooling? <laughs> oh, you think? It was funny. I never thought, I was so nervous because I never thought I would do that. But once we started, my goodness, it was the coolest thing ever. So one of the things about homeschooling is there's so much more time and you're probably finding that. So as we were looking at <laughs> days at home and no lessons and no things that we usually go to, we were thinking, oh man, I bet people are feeling bored, bored, bored. Usually it just takes a couple hours to do all the schoolwork, you know. Then you have the full day to work on things. So what we usually do is fill the day. I have a list of things that I we've thought through, like what do we want the kids to be doing? What do we want them to have in their life? <laughs> And um, we make a list and say, you know what, you can do all these things before screen time. That way I don't have to um, limit screen time. I just, you fill your day with these things, spend an hour reading, go outside for an hour, spend an hour creating something. Then when it's, when all those things are done, oh, jobs working around the house since you're part of the family. Once you're done with all those things, you're free. Do what you want. That's how we've kind of worked it out. If you want those, some of those lists, you can DM me, or send me your email, and I can send you what we do. Okay, so I filled in these orange guys. Now I'm noticing that this version of the butterfly is a lot brighter than the last version. <laughs> you see? I don't know if you can tell. So that's one thing that I always like to talk about is no matter what, even from one day to the next, my art's looking different from my own art. Your art is going to look different from anyone else's and even different from what you're thinking is in your head. So be very careful not to um, compare yourself to anyone else or or um, your own thoughts in your own mind. It's easy, easier said than done, I know. But comparison is a thief of joy, Teddy Roosevelt said. And it's true. Okay. How's my speed going? Yesterday I was going a little too fast. Hopefully I'm keeping pace with you guys now. Oops, see, I put this one, I didn't wet this one. See how much more solid it looks? Yeah. I can go back in and put some water on there and I'll move around a little bit. Okay, so I've got these big shapes done. I'm gonna go in and get the smaller shapes filled in. Ooh, bright. Watercolors do um, lighten up as they dry, so just be aware of that. And something that's going to make this, um, this painting kind of 
magical is if it's not perfection, if it's not super perfect. If you let the colors bleed a little, let it look soft. I think that's the pretty part about this painting. Okay, now you see, notice here on the, on the body of the butterfly, I put just a little bit of orange and on the bottom of him because the light is probably coming from the top. So you always want to think about where the light's coming from when you're making a painting, right? So we're going to let the lighter, let the top be just white. And then we'll put some shadows of orange or whichever color you're using. And then gradiate up to a little yellow on the bottom of that. It's so close to the camera, it's turning green or something. Uh-oh. It's turning green? That's weird. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of orange on the bottom of this little guy. Okay, so we've got some yellow and orange. Okay, moving on to the next part. <clears throat> I'm gonna put some more yellow. We're gonna move gradiate up to yellow and green on this one. Still a little bit orange, but oops, I forgot to put water, you guys. Oop, see how much brighter that is? Add some water to it. I'm going to add some orange. For the Make it more interesting. Okay. I'm just going to make this one almost just white dirty water. <laughs> okay, water down. And then put the color in. Oops, I brought that in to that white spot I said I was making white. <clears throat> so I put color in on on the bottom half here and now I'm going in with my wet almost yeah you know, just a little bit wet brush and moving that paint around so I'm going to put my clean my brush off in the water I'm going to paper towel it a little bit so it's damp but it's not dripping and then I can move the paint around yeah. now when you're watercoloring, you'll see that it starts lightening up as it dries. We're gonna go back in and add layers. That's the way that we can make brighter colors, colors pop more, they have to have layers. So we'll let it dry, we'll go back in as we want to and make it um, brighter if we want. Okay, water on my brush, little tap, little, little, paper towel moment and then going back in I'm going to start going with my with my green and that's exciting when I get to start um, blending colors that don't usually blend they're not exactly the same you know so here we go I got yellow now I'm going to get a light green I've used this one too much almost gone here and I'm going to go in with that color now see how I have yellow and then boop, a line and then green that's not what we want we want it to blend so I'm going to clean my brush wash it off on the paper towel so it's almost dry and move the color that's already on the paper around so that it's blending. If it starts pooling, you know, if you have too much water, sometimes if you just let that dry, it's, ex um, it's exciting because it has little sunburst kind of drying patterns. Okay, going in with more green. This one's going to be almost all green. Oops, water. Probably get more excited than 
I should about these things. <laughs> I have a couple of different color, colors of green. If you, if you have that, if you have multiple colors of the same color, you can go in and add. See, that's a little brighter green. I thought, oh, that looks kind of nice to add a little dimension to the green. So it's not just one color. We're moving this paint around. This is a lot of free flowing. You decide where you want this paint and how you want it to look. Adding green in to all of those. A little bit more. It's so satisfying to know that you're putting some something on paper that was going to make people feel something. Isn't that a crazy thought? I think that every time somebody buys a painting and I think, huh, I colored on something and it's amazing. It makes people feel something and uh, encourages them and brings joy to them. That's just a cool thing. So you're doing that right now. That's what creativity is all about, just to evoke emotion. You know, we could just walk around with black and white, you know, no color and have pills for our food and no taste. <laughs> we could just talk and have no music, live in little pods that have no decorations or coziness. But no, we live with beauty all the time. And especially now it's important that we remember that we're made in God's image and he, I don't think he's a he, but uh, <laughs> he's a creator and he made beautiful things. And creation continues to create. And we are part of creation. Trees don't just grow once and then die. They re reproduce and they make beautiful things. They make all our flowers are starting to bloom. Our trees are starting to make those pollen pods. Man. Every time this year in San Antonio, I think, it's just go away for a month until the trees are all done with their pollen. Oof. All right, we're going to move on to the outer wings, and they're just kind of going to mimic this, this part. So whatever you did over here, you just want to keep going over on this other side. So put water down so it stays nice and see-through looking. And we'll go in and put the paint in and move it around till you feel like it's nice and colorful. Speaking of putting beauty in the world, my friend Heather is a writer and just a beautiful writer. And she wrote a blog post yesterday all about how we just be, this is the time to feel inspired and not feel um, depleted you know there's enough depletion in the world right now but we can choose to be inspired and to use our gifts to put beauty in the world and so I'm going to post that on my page after I'm done here because it was really encouraging she was really nice to me too <laughs> so I'm going to go up in with the green up here. So whatever you're doing, I mean, whatever you are gifted at, if you're a writer, you just, now's the time. You got some time at home to start writing. Do you have a novel that you always wanted to write? If you have 
something to say? Or you know what, sometimes I feel like we wait until we have something to say, all profound. I think sometimes it's just the, the act of doing, doing the art or doing the thing that we're put on the earth to do. And if we don't know what we're put on the earth to do, now's the time to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I was listening to Donald Miller the other day. He has a great podcast, The Story of uh, Story Brand or something like that. Yeah, he's he just takes you through like, what's your what's your um, life goal? <laughs> you know, what's the statement? What your life statement? What are you about? Why are you on this planet? It's really encouraging. Go check that out. Sometimes we just go through life and we don't even think about why we're here. But we are here for a reason. And everybody needs you. And what you bring to the table. Okay. Are we all filled in? Do we have our stained glass windows all filled? I'm going back in and doing another second layer in the corners here, if you notice. So I'm not going to put a whole layer over the whole of these shapes, but or just in the corners along the edges so that it feels like there's a, a movement almost. So they're not just one big block of color. And let it just flow. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is a, ooh, look at that one. Just flowed right into another one. This is, a, this is an exercise in um, curbing your perfectionism. <laughs> we need people who are, are detail-oriented. But when it comes to art and when it comes to... Uh, the things you can't control. It's important to learn what the difference is, <laughs> right? <laughs> I certainly have had to do that. Learn, learn, learn. Never stop learning. Okay. I might go back in in a little bit and put more colors in, but for now, I think that's good enough. Don't want to put too much paint or it'll start looking opaque. Okay. Look at that. We did the, we did the butterfly. It's not so hard, right? All right. Now we're going to do the free flow part. Okay. The outer edge of this painting, it is kind of like a, um, hints. It has kind of hints at a garden, doesn't it? It hints at um, flowers. But if you look at it, there's no real like definition of a flower on here. It's color blobs, a little bit of a stem here, a little bit of drips, different colors. Now on the bottom here, I did put some darker um, color, so it looks like he's kind of standing on something that's here maybe a dark, darker flower, or maybe it's just that he's on top so that, so there's like a shadow, you know? So I'm, I'm going to start with this part, just a little bit of brown and orange. Um, so he, he's standing on something, on maybe a flower or a, a leaf or something, and then we'll move up through and what I want you to remember is we're going to do one color at a time and we're going to let them bleed into each other. So we're going to use a lot of water, not dripping, but water so that the paper is wet. And I want you to let yourself not be perfectionist and not be um, detailed about this. You're going to just let it flow. Okay. I know it's hard. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go in with water. Water, water. 
Something I see sometimes when people do outlines or um, like the backgrounds in a painting or a drawing, especially kids, um, they'll do, they'll figure out that there is a horizon line and they'll stick the, the animal or whatever is on the horizon line and there's nothing above the horizon line and then there's ground. <laughs> but if you think about it, if you look behind me, you can see all the way up to the top of your phone screen or whatever you're watching on. So when you're looking at me, you don't just see the floor and then me standing on top of the floor. You see me and all the things behind me, right? So the world is continuing the way our eyes work. You see all the way up to the very top of our, up to the sky. When you're looking at one thing, you see the background, you see the whole thing. So when we're painting, we don't want to just put the thing that the, the animal or the person is sitting on. We want to think about all the background, okay? So in this one, we don't have a very definite um, horizon line, but we're gonna, this is where the guy is sitting. So we're gonna go in with a little bit of brown and put that in on our, on our water. Now, nice and fluffy. I'm using the side of my brush and I'm making little dabs, little fluffy paint strokes. And like I said, it's gonna go up and inside by his body here. It's gonna go down across. Okay, and if you feel like the brush strokes are showing too much, you go in and add some water and put some water on top of that paint and let it really flow around, okay? I'm gonna add some yellow in there and let it blend into the brown This is just all very subjective. You just do what you feel like. There's no right or wrong. You're going to fill in this space. I'm just painting with water at this point because I put a bunch of paint on. I'm just adding water to it. Okay. And a little pink. Ooh, this is going to be... little ethereal flower over there. Just let it bleed out. Yeah. Okay. I really can't wait to see all your paintings. Yesterday was so fun. I got to see people sent in their, posted their pictures. So please be, be brave and do that. Not just the kids too. Come on, grown-ups. I know there's a lot of grown-ups on here. Show, show your work. What's the point of doing art if you don't show it, right? I have to tell myself that all the time. <laughs> the first 10 years that I painted, I just painted in my, in my room all alone and didn't do a lot of sharing. <laughs> I get it. But it's encouraging when you do, when, you, when people do share it, right? Like, I'm sharing with you. Hopefully you're encouraged. Okay, I'm going to put a big flower right here. I'm going to be bold and put some bright pink in there. And look at that. Just random color. I'm going to put more water on, let it flow around, and see what happens. Have you ever heard the obey the work or obey the peace? <laughs> Let the peace tell you what it wants to do. That's kind of the fancy art people way of saying. Sometimes you can't control things. <laughs> We're finding that out, aren't we? <laughs> okay, there's a little bloppy flower. Put a little more pink, yellow in here. Ooh, that's a nice bright yellow. I'm going to do more of that down here. Now, you notice that my, down here it's getting really light because I put a lot of water on there. We're going to go back in and put more color.
There's not a lot of instruction for this. It's all just fun and flow. Fun and flow. It's practice and flow. You can trust that. You are made with creativity. I think sometimes we think that we need to teach our kids to be creative. I think it's more that we need to give them space to let it out because everyone's born with creativity in them. So give ourselves time to create, give our kids time to create, and trust it, right? Trust what's coming out of you is going to be beautiful. Look at it, step back, see what you think. What does this need here? What's, what color would I like to see in that spot? And just put it in. It's looking good, guys. Sometimes I see people's paintings and I think, how in the world did they do that? But usually when you break it down, you can figure it out. It's not as complicated as it looks. Any questions, anybody? Are you in the flow? I don't want to interrupt the flow if it's happening right now. <laughs> Something that I think about a lot is the first 10 years I was painting, I started painting, um, I painted in college, I took a bunch of classes and stuff, but then I didn't do it for a long time. I was singing and making music and doing that kind of thing. And then I got married and had babies and you know, that takes over life, right? feels like it's the only thing you can do with, <laughs> there's not a lot of time, you know? But I did get a little cuckoo being home all the time with babies. I don't know if anybody can relate. <laughs> it's a lot of time just alone at home. Ooh, look at that cool thing. Do you see that's happening? Just growing and growing. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah, I was home alone with the kids. My husband was working a lot and I was feeling cuckoo. So I, I started painting a little at home and kids um, make messes and get into things. So it, it got a little messy. But I had my eye on this little place that was in our town in California. I saw some, a for rent sign on the main street downtown. It's just above a wine bar in Visalia, California. And they were renting out spaces, like office spaces. And I had seen that and I thought, oh, that would be fun to go and have my own space. But I don't know, I just didn't think it was possible so we talked about it. My husband thought it was a great idea, and I, I kind of fought. I brought that. I brought it up, and then I was fighting him on it. But um, <laughs> he came home with keys one day and said, "You know what? I would really like you to do this and go once a week and paint because I think it's good for you, and you're better when you paint. You're happier when you have an outlet." So, yeah, yay, husband. <laughs> So I did, and I painted and painted and painted. It's kind of like a prayer to me. It's like a meditation. So when I was talking about the flow, I think that's a lot of times people try to get there other ways, you know. But I think whenever you're focused on something and giving it your full attention, your brain can calm a little bit. And you um, that that's what happened to me anyway. It, my brain calmed. It was working on something, and the other parts of my brain were able to relax and listen and hear. So another reason why I think painting right now is a good idea, or any kind of creativity. 
So we need to have our brains calmed and we need to hear what the Spirit is saying. So let's paint. <laughs> okay, we're almost, I'm almost done. Are you almost done? Are you getting there? I think I want more pink flowers. Kind of went crazy with the brown. It's not the same as my other one, that's for sure. That's okay. All right. I'm going to go back in to these places where it's kind of been drying and add more paint so that they're brighter colors. And I'm going to think about maybe what shape a, a flower would be, kind of ethereal shape. Yeah, fun. Okay, I'm going to use a small little tiny brush and go in to make some of these stems. If you notice on that original painting, I put a little bit of a stem here, a little stem here, maybe a pistol. I don't know. Maybe it's not a, maybe it's not a stem, but little lines to just suggest that these flowers had, have a little bit of structure. I'm going to wait until they're dry though, because there's a lot of water going on here. While it's drying, I want to let you know about um, a couple of things that I am making available to people. Um, I'm going to do this every day, so if you want to pop on every every day until I don't know until we stop, <laughs> until we decide not to, um, at one o'clock Central Time. Since we're all home, let's just paint together. Tomorrow, I think we'll do this one. You see that? I'll post it. Two dragonflies. I've got a giraffe here we'll do, maybe some lovebirds, some, lots of different, different things. I also have some bigger painting parties, virtual painting parties. Uh, here in San Antonio, I do painting parties, you know, in person go to people's houses, I carry my little stuff in, set up easels and we do painting parties with usually a lot of wine and lots of fun. <laughs> so since we all have to stay home, why don't we just uh, get your glass of wine at home and <laughs> paint together virtually. So these are little, you know, watercolor paintings, but if you would like to do a larger scale on canvas with acrylic paints, we're gonna do those uh, once a month for $25. If you go on patreon.com slash Sarah Giese, you can sign up there for that. It's a, it'll be a lot of fun and hopefully we'll be able to, to uh, talk to each other better. It'll be a smaller group. So that's available. And also with that $25, you also have access to a book study I'm going to be doing on the Artist Way book. That's right here. If you're interested in doing, um, you can see that. If you're interested in doing a book study with me, we're just going to do one chapter a month. Not a big, uh, hefty commitment, but I can tell you I've gone through this book four times. This is my fourth time, and it has all kinds of um, like activities and exercises that really help you to delve into what you were created for and not block your creativity. It gives weight to your creativity because it's important why you're here and what you put to the world, into the world. We need you to be on, on fire. <laughs> and then everybody can warm themselves in your blaze. <laughs> so uh, if you're interested in that, sign up on patreon.com. There's other things there you can look around. I love that platform because it's a way that I can easily interact with you, with the people that are interested in being a community with me about creativity and encouraging each other. So if you're interested in that, please go there and check it out. How's your paintings doing? A lot of times when I'm not on camera, <laughs> I'll get my hair dryer and dry it and then it's a lot faster. But for now, I'm just going to pretend that I dried my painting and see what happens. 
I'm going to use my little tiny brush. You might want to go in with a, a marker um, and put some little stems in. So think about what a stem looks like. They're not straight usually. They're a little curvy, a little knotty. Not knotty like bad knotty, you know, knots. A little bit here, a little bit there. I'm going to put one over here too. There's a lot of water over here. I hope it doesn't bleed like crazy. Okay. And then another fun little thing we could do. See what happens here. I put some, um, I don't know if you see it right here. I did a little bit of a drippy kind of look. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in with maybe, let's see what color. I'm just a pink color and I'm going to get my brush pretty wet so it's kind of drippy and then I'm going to put my hand like this my finger like this and I'm going to tap lightly and there's going to be some sparkles on there don't go overboard because it gets a little wild and I'm just going to add some water to them so that they kind of spread out it's pretty Okay, how is everybody feeling? Are we done? I think we're done. Look at this one compared to this one. Ooh. Can you see? It's not the same. One's a lot brighter than the other. The one by the camp of the light's looking green. It's looking it's green. There we go. Is that better? <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, so my first one looks different from my second one. It's okay. That's good. I know yesterday, <clears throat> yesterday, um, one of the little boys did a painting with us and he, um, he didn't really like, well, he, he said he liked his first one, but he thought he could do better on the second one. So he traced it again and did it again and sent me both. I was really proud of him for doing that. Sometimes you just feel like, oh, you know, the first time, eh, I'm not sure if I like it. Go back and do it again. You have time, and each time you're going to learn something, you're going to know what you like and what you don't like, and you're going to do it differently. The more you do it, the more you're going to learn. 10,000 hours, right? Can you show us both side by side? Can you see it? Or maybe if I move some things around. Like that. Oops. Is that good? This is a little blotchy. I would I maybe move it that way more? This way? And with watercolor, you guys, it's never done. Look at this. I was, it was a little too bold and strong. I just added some water on my brush and I moved that paint around. You can, you can always just move it around. Yay. Okay. So that's the painting for the day. Please post them and let me see what you did. So share your work. When I, in my vocals classes, um, I always have a lot of nerves, you know, whenever, whenever you're putting something out into the world from yourself into the world so people can see it, it's a little nerve wracking, you know, feels a little exposing. I know I still feel exposed, so it's just how it is. But when you do that, the easier it gets as you do it more. So in my vocal classes, there's always nerves and we have a rule, we have a little practice that everybody, while someone's singing a solo, everyone else is thinking of three things that they could say to that person that they did well. Even if, what if they, even if they forgot the words, even if they got out of tune, there is something you can say positive <laughs> to your friend about what they did. Maybe they had confidence, maybe they pushed through and they didn't, they tried hard. Maybe it's the perfect song for them. Maybe their voice was so pretty and they had great breath support. Maybe the, the tone of their voice changed throughout the, um, the song and it made it more exciting. So there's lots of things you, you know, you can always say about somebody's, uh, expression. So as you're posting things, I'm going to give my opinion. I'm going to tell you the things I see that are really great. And you guys feel free to do the same with each other. There's something pretty cool about practicing, encouraging people. So do that if you want to. Thanks for joining me.